I'm Pastor John McClain here with the drum roll. See, we need to get we need to get sound effects. Like we need something <laughs> with drum. We got the superintendent of Tucson International Academy, a former Tucson Unified School District educator, the author of the book "Making College Come True." That's right here on the desk in front of me, and also the newest talk radio show host in the fair city of Tucson. She goes by the name Dr. Jennifer Herrera. Woo woo! Yeah, yeah. All right. Yay. Also, also, like her slang name is Dr. J. If you're feeling yes. hip, so yes. <laughs> I got Dr. I'm always feeling hip, so I got Dr. J here in studio with me, <laughs> and I'm here in studio with her, and we got some cool guys in studio with us as yeah. well. So I'm excited. I'm excited sure. today. I feel like it's like one of the first time I've been in the office with the principal. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't feel... And not in trouble. Yeah, I'm not in trouble. Yeah, I'm not scared at all. Makes Somehow that doesn't surprise this. me, John. Yeah, yeah, the same. <laughs> yeah, <give it> up. <laughs> but I know, like usual, you got an excellent Making College Come True tip of the week this week to kind oh, of set yeah. up our, our amazing show with uh, these amazing principals. Yes, I sure do. All right. Well, last time we were talking about how a college degree, a four-year college degree, even a two-year college degree, associates or bachelors, um, open doors for you that are not going to be open um, career-wise unless you have them. And why is that? What do you get out of college? It's way more than more education. It's way more than, ooh, I took English composition again. Uh, I took math again. It's, it's much, much further beyond the academic content. It's more about networking. It's more about engaging your learning because you're choosing to, not because you have to go to school. It's about taking... Um, the initiative yourself and studying things that you're interested in because while you do have to say take some staple courses like mm. some English and some math mm. you also get to take um, uh, electives and things in your major so by going to college you get to study things that are interesting to you all of us have purpose and we're here for a reason and so what are what are the purposes how can you know your purpose well, remember we talked about on one of the shows that things that bother you, like it bothers you that that um, the roads are in bad shape. So maybe you want to become a construction foreman and get those crews able to fix the roads a lot quicker and do it more affordably and do it in a way that benefits people faster. Hmm. And that's a big job. I mean, doing something like that would yeah. help everybody because we all use the roads. Um, maybe another thing that bothers you is, you know, your... Um, feeling bad about the the homeless and you see people on the street and it's so hot like right now it's 110 115 mm, mm -hmm. how are they surviving i do not know and um maybe that's a concern and it's a concern to the point that you just can't keep driving you have to stop and see if there's something you can do that tells you that might be something that you were uniquely designed to help solve that problem mm -hmm. which is what pastor john does he has a, a side on that and he's able to help hundreds hundreds of guys mm -hmm. and gals and they can have a, um, options and not feel like they're trapped in a, a difficult life so College degrees help you uh, recognize what bothers you in the world. It, they help you to meet other people who help you talk through your ideas. You know, well, that's a crazy idea. You know, well, you don't necessarily throw it out. If somebody doesn't like your idea, maybe you just say, uh, you see how you respond. And if you respond with, yeah, you're right, never mind, maybe you weren't that compelled to that, that issue. Mm -hmm. But if you respond in your heart more like, um, really? You think not? Well, I'm going to show you how I'm right and how that if I can just get an open door, I'm going to cause that to happen. And then I'm really going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. you know, so those are the ways, you know, things that bother you are probably your area that you need to solve some part of that problem. And when you, how do you solve that problem? You need doors to open. Usually you need money. Okay. Banks are going to loan you money or people are going to give you money when they feel you are trustworthy. How are you trustworthy? Can you follow the rules? Someone who doesn't follow the rules of like banking or finance or um, fulfilling promises you make, that's harder to give money to those kind of people when you, they don't have a track record. Well, in college, everybody knows what a bunch of red tape and how many hoops you have to jump to get through college. You have to make sure all your loans have, have descended in the right place. You have to mm -hmm. make sure that you're uh, getting your grades done, you're communicating with your professors, that you're getting along with your roommate, that you're able to um, uh, accomplish the goals of the program because 
when you do, you end up with a degree. And so having that experience of learning how to cooperate with others and cooperate with the system, whether we like the system or we don't like the system, if you want to go anywhere in life, you have to learn how to cooperate with it to some degree. And that's who will give you money. They'll give you money to go help the homeless and to go help charter schools and to go help do whatever it is uh, if they feel they can trust you with that money. Mm-hmm. And, um, and if they can trust that you know how to organize people and to get them to flow in a path. So really that to me is why I love doing uh, making college come true for people because I know personally it's going to open doors for them. Mm-hmm. And they can't tell me otherwise because I've seen it too many times and I know the truth. Can your door open other ways? Yes, it can. But it is a hundred times more likely if you have some sort of credential. And I'm not saying everybody has to get a credential, but I'm saying if you want to be a life changer for others, you will have more power to do that if you have some sort of credential, mm. like a degree of some sort or program, the diploma of, of something. So it just, I don't know, it's just how it kind of works. Um, it's also a lot of fun, okay? I mean, you do yourself a big favor going to college. Mm. It's a lot of fun. You get to do sports. You get to do uh, clubs. You meet all these people from all over the world. Wow, I mean, where mm-hmm. else can you get to do that? If you go right out of high school into a job, you're going to have limited opportunity to meet people any different than the ones that are there at the place where you're working. Mm -hmm. So that's why I love um, making college come true because to me it's making uh, changes for people for life to become better for other people when people decide to pick up leadership and lead others. And that's why I'm excited we get to interview these two guests. Mm. We have Principal Miguel Montemayor and Principal Pete Meehan. And they have both been principals for a very long time. They mm. both think they're young, but they're not. And um, <laughs> just I would throw that in there. <laughs> one's older than me, one's younger, so I guess they're not that old. But what I would say is uh, they have um, also totally had a lot of doors open to them and will continue to have just because of who they are as people, people of integrity, people of vision and mission, and able to get uh, big goals accomplished Plus, they do have their degrees. It makes a big difference. So mm. that's what I'm looking forward to talking about today. They're going to tell their story. They're going to say how they have um, experienced different things and the power involved in making college come true. Mm-hmm. Nice. <clears throat> well, awesome. Well, I'm excited. One, I've heard a lot about Principal Montemayor. So, uh, but all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All, of all course good, it of is. Course. Of course it is. Yes. Yeah. Would it, would it be anything else? Yeah. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm definitely. I'm excited to hear about just like this. The I don't know. Almost a flowering from the seed that was. You know. Okay. Let's go to college. That that sp- that seed sprouted. You started watering it, and you're like, okay, I got my degree. I want to be an educator. And then you started watering it more, and then next thing you know you got you know a a full bush and actually becoming a principal like that's a to me that seems like a big deal i don't know if that's like to you guys at this point that seems like a big deal but i definitely look forward to hearing about it yeah it's gonna be good they have good stories we now return to the making college come true radio show brought to you by tucson international academy Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to the Making College Come True radio show brought to you by Tucson International Academy. I'm Pastor John McClain here with what I this is safe to say one of my best friends in Dr. J, also yes. known as Dr. Jennifer Herrera, a, uh, a pillar of the community oh, here yes. to, to lift us up and make college come true for hundreds, thousands of children. <laughs> it's, just think if there's there may be a child out there today that's graduating college and going to be a success that may have been breaking into your car otherwise. (laughs) That is true. Yeah. Yeah. So so these are, that's the realities I like to put on people's Mm -hmm. brains every now and again, like the amazing work that's being done. It's not just this, you know, the surface level. Okay. Goody. This kid goes to college. Like communities are changed by college. These type of opportunities um, make a big difference, not only for families, but for all of us. So, I thank yeah. you. I thank you for that. Well, you're welcome. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Love so doing that. We will. We will ten, uh, turn to to our awesome guests that we have today. And I guess have you reintroduced them because you know me. I of put course. your names, and yes. then I certainly have some cool questions for for you guys. 
Yes. Okay, great. All right. So I have with me today Principal Miguel Montemayor, and he has been a principal and teacher with Tucson International Academy for 18 years. That's like... That's like a long time. It's almost a lifetime, yes. I raised this child. No. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's done it all. I mean, he will tell you all about it. And um, then we also have Pete Meehan, who is a natural leader, and the poor guy cannot get away from being called into leadership. He has just got it on him. You meet him. You say, oh, my God, this guy knows what he's doing. And so... Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> he is totally... Uh, uh, a TIA principal for nine years. These are not just short time people. These are people that really, when they get a hold of something, they want to develop it. They want to bring ingenuity. They want to make a difference. And so, yeah, that's who I've ha- got to work with all these years, and I nice. love it. Yeah, yeah, it seems it's super impressive guys, and the energy you guys put out, like I'm just soaking it in. So I certainly <laughs> appreciate it. But I'll start with um, Principal Meehan, uh, since you're closer to me, and, <laughs> and and you can hurt me quicker. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I guess let's start with uh, something, a big question we like to ask on this show because it's like it kind of starts the, the ball rolling and, and inspires us is, um, I guess, tell us what made you consider college in the first place and, and that experience and how you kind of, you know, got into it and how that that ball started for you. Well, I was, uh, I'm come from Connecticut. I'm okay. born and raised in, in Connecticut. I've been there uh, 18 years, graduated high school. Um, basically, what got me into it was living back east uh, and being in Connecticut, one of the Ivy League schools, which is Yale, mm. is ba- basically in the backyard. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So the culture back in New England is very um, college orientated, you might mm. say, to begin with, a region mm-hmm. of the United States. And uh, when you come from there, when I came out to Arizona, it was a whole different thing. The cultures mm-hmm. were different, not mm-hmm. just college wise, but also, you know, um, social wise, because, mm-hmm. you know, uh, of where, where the regions of the United States are. But basically what got me into college was my dad. He, uh, he said, you know, we don't have anybody. He could have went to college, but my grandparents at the time needed help at home, mm-hmm. uh, which is the case for a lot of people these days. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was back even back in the uh, 60s and 70s mm-hmm. when I grew up. And he said, you know, college is the way to go. Mm-hmm. He says, you can get anything off of college. It doesn't matter what the degree is. Um, mm-hmm. you, you can always roll off of that degree because mm-hmm. you can always get another one into what you really want to go into. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that stuck with me. And, of course, having all my friends who are already talking about colleges, mm-hmm. we were all talking about college in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. That's the culture back east is mm-hmm. that, you know, you're, we're already going, set and going. Mm-hmm. We get into freshman year, and then we figure out what we want to be, and then we change that by the 10th grade. And then by mm-hmm. the 11th grade, we keep changing what we <laughs> yeah. want to be. Uh-huh. Um, but the goal was we were going to go to college one mm-hmm. way or the other. Mm-hmm. And so my folks... Uh, decided one day that they were going to move down to Arizona, better climate, better weather, everything mm-hmm. else. Uh, you know, and Connecticut was great. And I was going to stay with my grandparents, and I was going to go to the U- University of Connecticut there mm-hmm. after checking out Northeastern up in Massachusetts and a couple of other colleges for journalism. Mm-hmm. Long story short is I, I, my dad said, called me up one day and said, hey, the U of A just joined the Pac-10. I go, really? And he goes, yeah, and it's only 250 or $260 a semester. I go, I'll be right down. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I came wow. down. I had to get my year's residency. So I worked at a shoe store for a little while until I got my residency. And then I you know, hooked up with the U of A and everything. And I was amazed to see um, the number of students that weren't there at the U of A. In mm-hmm. other words, this is a town with a university right in your town. Mm-hmm. And there was, like, nobody there. I mean, there was... You know, I, I couldn't believe how many kids that weren't at the U of A. And mm. so I started talking to a few of them, and they said, you know, I said, well, college for us isn't really a big thing. And mm. I said, well, why is that? Because, well, we can get a job here and we get a job there. And I was working at Tucson Newspapers for 20 years while I was going to U of A. Mm. And I had just gotten a family about 10 years into the paper and uh, realized the responsibilities. But I remember what my dad said. He says, you know, in order for doors to open, something that Dr. J referred to earlier, mm-hmm. if you want a door to open for you on a job you really want, mm-hmm. you should be going to college. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it clicked in. I did do my college time. I was very glad I did. And uh, I had a lot of fun in college. A lot of people think, oh, it's all studies. <laughs> well, it is all studies. But, you mm-hmm. know, you have the movies. You know, usually you have your you know, girlfriends or boyfriends, whatever the case may be. Um, you got to have a lot of fun in your life. That's one of the things that college mm-hmm. does, too. It teaches you how to be social as well. It's not just yes. educational, but it teaches you how to be social on an adult level. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that is, was a big plus for me. I learned a lot of things uh, yes. during that time. Um, and then finally, as time went on, and I realized that the newspaper you know, after 20 years of it, I, I need to change the pace. Mm. Two things I wanted to go into. One of them was uh, going 
become a teacher mm-hmm. and the other thing was actually what I'm doing right now which I'm kind of thrilled is going to radio you know after <laughs> that. Yes. So, so I kind of fulfilled my radio. third thing already right here it's kind of nice <laughs> uh, you know in my retirement I'm thinking about going back to school again I went back to school um, I was at the paper um, to get my teaching certification at the University mm. of Phoenix nice. so I had a U of A degree and then I got a post back degree in the University of Phoenix mm. and I'm thinking about going back in my retirement to go to school again mm. to go into what I'm doing, talking about right now nice. <laughs> and, and, it. into yeah. radio yeah. So, so you're a glutton for punishment. I am a glutton yeah. for punishment. I, I, uh, <laughs> but but fast forward, I, I taught at a, another charter school, which is uh, ten years ago, uh, Tag Charter School, and I was just just a teacher. And one one of my buddies who was teaching with me says, "You know, they're looking for a principal." I said, "No, my wife." I told my wife I wouldn't get any more supervisor positions. <laughs> I, I told her, "No, I'm not gonna. I won't just be a teacher. I'll retire until I'm a teacher." Mm-hmm. And she goes, "Oh no, no, no." She goes, "Just make sure you don't." I said, "I won't." And sure enough, the boss came up to me one day at the other school, and he said. Hey, I need somebody to be my principal. I said, no. And then everybody else says, Do you want these other guys to be the principal? I go, oh, no, not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I went ahead and I said, Okay, I took it. Mm. And then fast forward, fast forward to that. And then the, the school, he was retiring, and the school was closing down and everything. And, and then my buddy who jumped over to TIA, he says, Hey, he goes, You know, they got a position over, you know, a teaching position over at TIA. And I go, Oh, great. I said, He's been there like 10 years already, so it's got to be a good place, you know? Mm. I trust my buddy. I mean, why would he lie to me? So, anyways, I took the door to TIA, and that's when I met Dr. J, and, and uh, things just clicked. I mean, mm. it just clicked yeah. mm-hmm. it was right a sushi, away. I know. It was a sushi, yeah, yeah. Mm. Sushi Tuesdays. Uh, <laughs> but, anyways, it just clicked. Mm. And that was, and that was, one of the things I can go back to remember what my dad says that it opens doors for you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I never have gotten to be the leader or I would have never gotten to college if it wasn't for uh, my dad basically mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know I'm the first generation with a, with a bachelor's degree in my family That's awesome. right. um, and that to me was the biggest thrill of my life when I got that degree I mean mm-hmm. I don't break down in tears a whole lot but when I got that degree that meant more to me mm-hmm. than anything else for the simple fact this is something my dad wanted and something the family was really looking on mm-hmm. and and so where I am Huge. today is is big and that's why I came over to teach I was just going to be, I told my wife again, I'm just going to be a teacher. Uh-huh. And then <laughs> and Dr. J, Dr. J goes, you know, Mr. V, could you just like cover for like about six, seven weeks? Because the uh-huh. principal had had some illness. And, and I said, sure, no problem. And then, well, here I am today. Yeah, <laughs> Nine years right. later, still principal. <laughs> that's I love it. That's so beautiful to hear about. Uh, so often, especially on this show, we hear about how like the family isn't supportive of college. Maybe, you know, like you're saying, they're the one of the first in their family to ever go to college. You mm-hmm. know, they didn't have that support. So it's amazing to hear that you did have that support. Yes. And not only did you have that support, you count it to your dad that right. you even did it. So that's, yeah. that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's an Thank honor. you for sharing with that. Oh, absolutely. That's an yeah. honor to him. Like I said, that was uh, something major that a lot of kids down here, I found out, that mm-hmm. didn't do that. So. We now return to the Making College Come True radio show. Brought to you by Tucson International Academy. Hello and welcome back to one more amazing segment. We got actually two left technically, but this is just one of those two of the Making College Come True radio show brought to you by Tucson International Academy. I'm Pastor John McLean here with Dr. Jennifer Herrera, the yes, superintendent sir. of Tucson International Academy. That sounds like a big deal, superintendent. I'm super. You, know, you are I, pretty super. Yeah, there is yeah, like a I'm, super thing there. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. We need to get you like a saying. superintendent yes. shirt. Yes. Like a, a cake. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And and we're here with two other really super people. We got uh, Principal Meehan and Principal Montemayor. That's just a fun name to say. Isn't yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, very few people can actually enunciate correctly. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I'm one of them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so we will, uh, before we went to break, we were talking with Principal Meehan about um, just his journey with College Around It, and it's mm-hmm. just a beautiful story. I now look forward to hearing a very similar beautiful story coming from Principal Multimayor, pri- primarily just um, what inspired you to join college and, you know, and what that experience was like. Mm-hmm. Well, Pastor John, um, I believe uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger once said, I am the man who I am not because of who I am, but because I took advantage of the doors that were open for me. Mm -hmm. And it is true. Um, my That's sister. the first time Mar- Arnold Schwarzenegger has ever been quoted on this show. <laughs> <laughs> really? I love that. Really? <laughs> Arnold, thank, you, thank, yeah, you. thank you for that honor then. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, when I graduated from high school uh, in Texas, Southern Texas, mm-hmm. I wasn't expected to go to college. I wasn't expected even to go to a trade school or anything. Mm-hmm. I was just expected to join the labor force. Mm-hmm. Uh, my sister, however, she was attending NAU at the time, and she told me, well, you know what, if you want to come over here, 
come to Flagstaff. We can uh, share the apartment. You can live with me, and uh, you can go to college. Mm. So that's what I did. I attended NAU and back in 96. And let me tell you, it's a whole lot different from what it is right now. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of support systems that are in place now that, are, that, that were not back then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I could say that I got homesick. I, you know, I felt lonely at the time because uh, I was by myself uh, most of the time. Mm-hmm. So when my brother told me, hey, um, there's this construction company that is hiring. Do you want to come over? I dropped college and came to Tucson and started working for the construction company. Mm. And um, pretty soon, with my background in engineering, I went from being a laborer to running <laughs> construction, construction sites for mm. the superintendent. Yep. So then uh, that's how I met Dr. J. I, I had the honor <laughs> to remodel the uh, first Tucson International Academy oh, really? building huh. about 20 yes. years ago. Uh-huh. And. Uh, mm. She sold me on the school, and I was very happy <laughs> about it. So I told my wife about it. My wife brought my, my kids to, to the school. Mm-hmm. And about six, seven, seven months later, I got really, really sick. And, and the doctor told me, well, you know what? You can't do construction anymore. Mm. Um, if you continue doing construction, you're either going to die or you're going to, worst case, you're going to kill somebody. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. So then I had to stop doing construction. Um, I took about, I want to say, two or three days off. And then my wife told me, hey, they need a substitute down at the school. Mm. Do you want to <laughs> substitute? And I thought, well, you know what? I have some tutoring experience at the college level. I can, mm. uh, how hard can it be, you know, substituting a couple of kids? So I went in and I substituted for about two weeks. Then uh, they hired the teacher. Mm. And um, I was there for, as a TA to mm. support the teacher. And afterwards, the uh, teacher quit. Mm. And uh, the teacher <laughs> said, course. I can't do it, you know. Um, so then we had a meeting with all the parents and, and Dr. J. And the parents said, well, you know what? Don't look for another teacher. Just have Mr. Montemayor finish the school year. Yeah. And I said, okay, fine. You know what? I don't, have my, I don't have my degree yet. I don't have anything. But I'll finish the school year. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I'll take on the responsibility. And sure enough, we uh, did finish the school year. And we finished that first year late. I think we finished like around June because the kids were behind on, on school days. Mm. So then the next year, uh, Dr. J said, well, you know, what would it take to get your degree, you know, and just become a teacher? Mm-hmm. And like I said, you know, I, I saw the uh, the doors beginning to open and mm. uh, I started working on my degree. I got my certification and moved on from uh, being a substitute to a TA, to a teacher, to a lead teacher, and then assistant principal and now principal for TIA. Mm. So I pretty much <laughs> uh, went up the ladder mm-hmm. and uh, making use of those doors that were open for me through TIA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and what I liked about it was, you know, this is my belief. My belief is is that when you meet someone, that you can see certain things about them in them. I mean, I think most people can see it. Maybe I can see things that I don't know. But I saw this, you know, superintendent of the construction crew that was quickly, rapidly getting our school ready for kids and it had to be due to the leadership because that doesn't just happen by itself because I see them when you weren't there and Mm -hmm. I would go Mm. talk to them and try to buy them pizza so they'd keep working but um, that is leadership and leadership is leadership is leadership and why not put that to use on kids in the future of their education and future of their lives and seeing someone who comes from a different background to me gives that teacher that principal more credibility Mm. so both of them having another career before actually teaching to me is is added bonus Mm because they can say to kids yeah teaching is is a career it's separate from what else i did Mm. and it's it's so powerful Mm -hmm. and i was wondering like so when she came to you and she was like okay how much how hard would it would it be for you to get your degree to become a teacher explain that process that to us more and like what the thinking that you went through and just, um, you know, the difficulty of actually going back to college and getting your degree to become a teacher. Well, the first thing that came to mind is how much time am I going to invest in this? Mm -hmm. Uh, Because that is um, always a fear, even though that I was halfway done, you you go back into thinking, okay, what classes am I missing? What, Mm -hmm. what is uh, the speciality that I'm going to go into? Uh, what support systems do I have in place? Because I already had a family by by then. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a little bit more difficult to go back to school when you have a family. Mm-hmm. And sure. there's so many different factors that affect that decision. 
But if you go through that door that's open and through, you know, the support that is surrounding you at the time and, and you just hang on and you say, okay, I'm going to do this. And slowly but surely you be, you make that dream a reality, you mm. know, and that's something that I want to pass on to my students. It's never too late. You know, it, it will, you will never run out of options. Mm. There, Options might become limited, but mm. it's going to be a little bit harder, but you still can have it done. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter how long it takes, as long as you get there. Mm. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and it worked out. Yeah. And you had the support of your wife. That's another bonus most people don't always have. That's mm-hmm. true. She was yes. the one saying, you need to be a teacher. You go. Mm. So having yeah. her behind you and then even working with her a little bit for a short time, she worked with us. And, I mean, it was it was awesome. And then just having the whole family, like, be involved in what Dad was doing, I'm sure it's it's powerful. And, you know, you had your son just recently graduate. I mean, there's a lot of benefits, and they got to watch you go through it. I think that's powerful. And that's one thing that we also try to teach our parents, you know, be supportive of your children. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, it may take some time, um, but if you're supportive, if, if you guys all come together, you guys can make it happen. We now return to the Making College Come True radio show, brought to you by Tucson International Academy. And welcome back to one more amazing segment of the Making College Come True radio show brought to you by Tucson International Academy. If you have a student that you're trying to make college come true in their life, please go to TucsonInternationalAcademy.com. If you don't, you may be missing out. I'm just going to tell you. And may I mention, I'm Pastor John McClain here with Dr. Jennifer Herrera. She happens to be the superintendent of that very academy we're talking about. And um, she's here with some connoisseurs of making college come mm-hmm. true in the in mm-hmm. the studio with us, with Principal Meehan and Principal Montemayor. Did, did, you no? did it good. Yes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, before we, we left to the break, we um, they were giving us, just telling us awesome stories about kind of their experience and what drew them to and through and in and kind of to the upper echelons of Tucson International Academy and um, now I guess let's let's turn the corner and let's let's talk about Tucson International Academy I mean yeah there's so many things I mean mm-hmm. you both have had such an impact on the students that that have gone to your schools mm-hmm. and I mean Montemayor has been principal of three different schools. I mean, and he has double the time of Mr. Meehan. So between the two of you, goodness, we could be here hours. But <laughs> think of someone who comes to mind that you were, you know, quite excited, like they were able to uh, obtain their college acceptance or their uh, degree. I mean, we have a few of your students that did get their degrees already. Um, just, yeah, talk about some of your students. Well, if I may say so, um, I've had had couple a couple of students come by after graduating from from uh, college or university. I've uh, I've had them, you know, and it's a special feeling that you get mm-hmm. because you haven't seen them for a year or two. You know, they come and visit from time to time, but when they come by and they and they say, you know what, Mr. Montemayor, thank you. You know that mm-hmm. for me, it's a uh, it pays for everything. Mm. Okay, it pays for everything. It pays for. All the extra hours that we spend, you know, preparing for events, all the extra money or all the extra effort that goes into creating opportunities for all these students to attend college. You know, mm-hmm. uh, for example, like the uh, college and career fair. You know, we spend at least <laughs> what three, four weeks oh, ahead yeah. of time. You know, Jeez. spending you know ten to twelve hours each day just mm-hmm. to make it happen, mm-hmm. and it's a, mm-hmm. a, a six-hour event. Mm-hmm. But the support that we get from the community, the enjoyment mm-hmm. that the students go through, you know, the uh, understanding that in order to have a career, they have to go through college and, mm-hmm. and tying it all together. And then afterwards, c- having a student come by and once they complete everything, you know, and they say, thank you, mm-hmm. you know, it's all worth it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Mm, nice. That and all the community, like all the, the different aspect uh, departments of the police. We have like um, mechanical all the way to uh, people in uh, media arts. Um, gosh, I mean, all the different people in Tucson. Uh, Steve Shell with his architecture firm. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, fun people who have connected themselves to TIA through mm-hmm. that event that basically you founded. And it thrives and goes on and on <laughs> to this day. Yeah, and and I mean we receive help from all the uh, a whole a whole bunch of different businesses, 
but community members as well like the mayor has been there yeah we have different uh celebrities who have uh tucson celebrities who have actually been Mm. and and liked and support the event Mm -hmm. and you know the students at first you know they're like well who is that you know Mm -hmm. and and then once we explain and then they're like oh really that's that person that's Mm -hmm. so and so we're like yeah and they're they you know they're taking their time to come and visit you guys and let you guys know the importance of continuing your education mm-hmm. the importance of selecting something that's going to make you guys happy mm-hmm. and and when like i said you know when they connect all the dots and you see that aha moment mm-hmm. it's just like that's that's what it, that's what mm-hmm. we're here for yeah definitely mm-hmm. yeah. yeah one of our biggest events yeah no go ahead oh uh, anyways um that career fair was is amazing in many ways because the kids do get to connect but they also get to see what's going to be required of them mm. mm-hmm. in order to get you know and a lot of it is college mm-hmm. and so when they understand the importance because a lot of these people who do talk at these sessions mm. some of them will open their own businesses and they'll even say you know a college degree will get you in the door a lot quicker than just trying to work your way from the bottom up to the top mm-hmm. which is also mm-hmm. good too i mean experience is the, one of the best teachers mm. but to get that added you know, um, emphasis, mm-hmm. college is it. I mean, yeah. it's basically where it is. And once you got the college in there, uh, like I was telling you earlier, um, you have that college degree, that's going to open a lot more doors for you. And it's mm-hmm. going to give you a little bit. It happened to me at the newspaper when I was working there. I was just mm-hmm. a regular driver or whatever um, at the main plant. And I was overseeing. But when I became into management was because I was also going to the U of A at the same mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. And so all of a sudden I was being noticed by my bosses mm-hmm. that, hey, this guy's getting a college degree and he's been working with us. So the experience and the college education mm-hmm. comes together. Mm-hmm. So nice. that opens it up. Mm-hmm. That's huge. So. Just like the double, the double win. Yeah, exactly. And then mm-hmm. you get the opportunity to impact and influence people at a higher level. I mean, what's the difference of influencing as a teacher versus a principal? What did you guys see the difference there? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually curious. A, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the amount that the size, I think, more than mm-hmm. anything. When you're in a classroom, when you're teaching, you're focused on one or two kids improving yeah. in that particular subject that you're teaching. Uh, maybe you're targeting, you know, some low achievers or challenging a high achiever, trying to bring the group as a whole forward and, mm-hmm. and make sure that they, they achieve. But as a principal, you get to see the full picture. You get to mm-hmm. see the whole forest. And to grab to grab all the students and the staff and the teachers and just push them in the direction that you want for them to go. Setting up goals for them and watching them achieve those goals is tremendous. Mm-hmm. It's, it just gives you a, a natural high. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and you also get to be a voice for the, of the kids as well, mm-hmm. being a principal. A lot of these kids come from you know tough homes um, and they have really nobody to talk to other mm-hmm. than their teacher and their principal. And a lot of times, I have a lot of kids, especially with the pandemic, a lot of these kids, are, you know, they started letting them come back to school and everything, mm-hmm. you know, and they, and they open up to you because they, they need to tell somebody that's different, somebody they can trust, mm-hmm. you know. And so you see a lot of these kids, you help a lot of these kids, um, you work with their parents, with them. Um, and that's the reward of being a principal is, is you got so many different things that you can do mm-hmm. uh, to help the families. It's not just you being an educator or even being a principal. It's also being um, a person who can um, help uh, people. And, and I've helped a lot of people. I have helped... Uh, Moms out, you know, uh, trying to figure out how to do schedules with their kids. Um, so being a principal is a lot more than being a teacher. But I'll tell you what, uh, at heart, I'm still a teacher. Mm-hmm. And so I think every good principal, the, the, the heart of that principal is because they were a good teacher first. And so. I guess another question, kind of in, <clears throat> in a similar vein, you, you said that you were a teacher at other institutions, yeah. right? Yeah. What is it like? And this is one of my favorite questions to ask the teachers that have taught at both places teaching at a diff, an, uh, a public institution or the other institution that you taught at before compared to teaching at TIA? Oh, it was like night and day. Okay. Just, I, loved, I, I loved the other place I was working because we had Fridays off, which was mm-hmm. nice. We had a Monday yeah, through I'm Thursday. Not try, I'm not trying that to was, get I you like that. No, but, but truthfully, it was a lot easier, like the uh, the learning objectives. Mm-hmm. They were already uh, cataloged for me, so all I had to do was look at my I didn't have to go through this state. That was one of the easiest things. Mm-hmm. Um, also, um, the atmosphere at TIA was a lot more comfortable. Mm-hmm. In other words, you didn't have to be on edge. You knew who everybody is. You knew where everybody stands. And and one of the nicest things when uh, uh, Dr. J here made uh, me principal was I said, you know, there's, there's a few kids we have to work with you know, as far as the school goes in mm-hmm. order to get our letter grade up. And mm-hmm. the only way we were able to do that, she worked so well, she gave me a, fr- a free hand, but she helps out a lot. Mm-hmm. One of the things I do appreciate about our superintendent is she's very involved, mm-hmm. very involved in everything. And if you need her, she's there. And if you need backing, 
you know, we, we she's got our back. Mm, and nice. that's the beautiful thing about working. Even compared to the newspaper and other places I've worked, I've never had a better uh, boss hmm. than, than uh, Jennifer has. Nice. Because yeah, truthfully, a compliment. Yeah, that's but a truth, huge compliment. But, yeah. but truthfully, you know, sometimes they'll, you kind of get stuck out on the island by yourself. Mm. <laughs> say, well, here you go, you know. And mm. um, But she has always backed me up. And that's what made my school, when I first got there, it was a D school. Now we're up to a B-rated school. Mm. Um, yes. Whatever it takes, right. Pete, to, to get this school up, let me know what it is. Mm. And she's backed me on in every one of those. Mm. So, well, that, and so. it was fun actually because yes, it was you fun. wanted to to hit that high goal. Right. I love being around high goal setters, and both of these guys are that. Mm. They have high expectations, and and it's a little sometimes it's like, man, will we ever do that? But it, every time we did it, yeah. every goal we set, I can't think of one that didn't get hit. If it was a, a how many student goal, or if it was the letter grade, yeah. or if it was handling certain parents and helping them feel more a part of the school, or whatever it is. And it was fun because good leaders. Mm. That's what this is. And I'm yeah. curious, were you ever a principal? Oh, yeah. Against yeah. my will. <laughs> Sounds familiar. <laughs> so yeah. what is them to the so club? <laughs> you're, yeah, asking, exactly. you're asking them, okay, what's uh, the yeah. differentiation, or differentiation mm. between being a teacher and being a principal? What's the difference between being a principal and superintendent? Oh, man. Okay, well, being a superintendent, you can step back so you can see things that are happening. So our schools are pretty similar. Like, we have a, a similar crowd at each school and similar issues in the family. So we have programs that we can bring to the schools. And having four schools, it's kind of nice because we have extra um, momentum in helping the kids so we can have our own career fair. And it won't be just the kids at that school. It's kids from other schools, our schools. And um, getting to, like, see the synergy of the principal working together and mm. thinking up ideas oh that's been a blast I love that I love mm. seeing their ideas get to come to fruition because it isn't just about what I see mm. I'm looking for a team I like working as a team I like working with people who have their own ideas about things and then are willing to work together with their with their other principals and their other leaders and the leadership team mm. to make it happen and mm. then when it happens my goodness it's a party mm. We've yeah. eaten in a lot of restaurants in yeah. town. <laughs> and then we enjoy yeah. our celebrations. Yeah. But you have to celebrate. How can you not? Everyone works so hard. Mm -hmm. And they're so good at it. So, yeah, I, I cannot yeah. complain. Right. And it's the, like the it's teamwork, awesome. yeah, teamwork is really good. Um, like I said, I've never worked with co-principals before. I mean, this is mm. the first time. Mm. And uh, sometimes I'm, I'm at home, I'm texting with the, the other two, and I think we have too much of a good time sometimes when we <laughs> communicate with each other. Mm. Uh, but it is like uh, Dr. J said, it is a team effort. And, mm. and working as a team, even though it's four different schools, uh, we've really managed to pull it together mm. and over the years. And that's what makes TIA so, so successful is all the teamwork that goes into into mm. each of these schools. Awesome. Yeah, so. it's, it's awesome. Oh, Thank you, Principal Meehan, for being here. Thank you, Principal Multimayor. Thank you, Pastor Multimayor. <laughs> I've like, I got to put my hand up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the Making College Come True radio show.